So now let's take a concrete example of how to using what the decode and encode architecture look li looks like. We call it sequence to sequence. The task here is like giving you a sequence data and not gen generate a single like word for like a text classification we did it before. We want to output a, another sequence. So given a sequence, output another sequence. It's like uh, it's not it's not so correct, but you like a DNA or do something like to get another thing, but <laughs> you're happening all the time. Uh, but this is not, uh, this is not, um, it's still the same length, you get the same length output. But for here, for the typical uh, application for the sequence to sequence is the machine translation. So the idea here is that given a sentence in a source language, and then we want to translate it to a uh, target language. So this is like uh, how Google translation is doing. And the, dif the difficulty here, you see that the source language sentence maybe have different length compared to the target language um, um, length. You can see the English um, sentence is longer than the Chinese one. So that's make things a little bit complicated. Okay. So let's jump directly into the model. Again, we have, the model have two parts the encoder part and the decoder part. The encode take the source sentence, which is actually just the RN model. What is very similar to what we had before. So this R model take the source uh, sentences and process uh, time, uh, time by time, and then the state you will pass into a decoder is just a hidden state of the last time step. Okay, similar, similar thing to here is a, the last one. So, because we, we know that the last time step, the hidden state will contain the information about the sequence, we think this one present, preserve all the information we want for this sequence. And then what we use here, we are using another RN, almost identical RN for the decoder. Then we're using this hidden state from the output from the encoder as the initial state, hidden state for the decode RM. So hope before we just initialize by zero, now we initialize by something which contains the information in the source, uh, source sentence. And during the, the prediction, what do we do here? That first time we fit into the spatial token called begin of a sentence, the BOS. Then you generate, you, you predict something, like uh, you predict the words and it's a, it, uh, it's a bonjour, then we pick up the prediction and feed into the second time step. I do another prediction. And every time we pick up the, the word predicted in the last time as the input to get output. Until we get the max length constraint, I, I say that we only predict 500, I mean, not 50 words for each sentence, or just the output the end of sequence like a spatial token. If we saw either this spatial token or just the, the max length is reached, we just stop. So we, now we can decode a, a, a sentence here. So in this way, like no matter how long the source sentence we have, we always, we always map into a vector. And given this fixed size vector, now we can decode it to give a different length. So the length, it really depends on the results we have or we reach out to the max length. So that is how to deal with like uh, different lens uh, source and the target pairs. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, let's look into what the encode and decoder architecture looks like. So it's actually very similar to what we have before. The encoder, just the source, its tokens, we fit into the embedding layer to get embeddings and then get to earn like earn recurrent neural networks, like uh, LSTM layers or like GRU uh, layers. Then each layer in the, in the encoder, we put its like uh, it's a hinder state of the last time step into a decoder, which means the decoder will have the same number of uh, recurrent layers and also have the same hidden size. So I can, I can use the uh, state from the uh, decoder, uh, from the encoder. The only difference here is that the decoder we have a dense layer, which can map the output of the uh, recurrent layer to the word to the token we want to predict. 
So that's just the, 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 the major thing. And um, so you can think, you can think it's, very, it's a pretty standard, um, it's pretty standard R models here. Okay. How about training? Like, uh, for training, um, the only thing difference is like um, how the data are fit into the decoder. For in the prediction, the data fit in the decoder is actually the, the predicted time in the, uh, in, the last, uh, in the last stage, but it makes training much harder. If I go di different, if machine translation, if, because I may have different presentation of the sentences. Even that, if I go pick up another one rather than the ground truth, I maybe just uh, have a large error, but actually that's not true. So what do we do here is that in the time zero, we still fit into the spatial token and then get output. We will compile the actual first um, token in the ground truth source sentence to compare the loss. So that's Loma as the time zero, but time one, we are put into the first token actually in the ground truth, not from the prediction. No matter how I predict in the previous time, I always feed the ground truth here. So, and compare it to the ground truth or the second token uh, to compare the loss. Okay, so every time I feed in the ground truth token and I predict the next token. So that's for training. So a little bit different to prediction. That is a typical way we do, uh, we construct. For language model, you already see that every time we like uh, we get a sen sentence predict the next words. Similar thing for translation. Okay. So far so good. Okay, let's go to the Python implementation. 